Hello everybody, it's Mr. Sauer and we are here at the start of week 12 for Pineapple Express Auto from Amsterdam Marijuana Seeds. This was grown underneath the Spider Farmer SE3000, which is actually right over here on the side, as you can see right there. Um, it was grown in a Spider Farmer 2.3 by 2.3 by 5 foot tent. It was a very small tent, very compact grow. Um, it was set up for a commercial flowering zone with that light and the compact space. Um, this was my first attempt at a deep water current bucket and I've already started to prep for the harvest today. Um, I've already dumped out a lot of the cocoa, I mean the, the clay, my bad, excuse me, the clay um, right there and as you can see here, I've already got it pretty emptied out and let's get a quick look here at the flowers on Pineapple Express Auto from Amsterdam Marijuana Seeds. This was my very first uh, deep water current grow. As you can see over there on the table, I have all the parts that I had on the inside. Um, I had used a aeration device just to mist it with water when it was smaller except for as it got farther in these kept getting clogged so it worked great when it was small but I guess it wasn't really needed, needed so much uh, the pump the stone and then I had a constant monitoring on my pH but back to Pineapple Express Auto here so She does have a really nice citrus smell. Um, I grew her with Blue Planet uh, Elite Nutrition Set and I had a bunch of extras and stuff with it. Uh, I had a cow mag, liquid seaweed, liquid blue blue booster, bloom booster, and a gold silica shield for some of the extras. And I was applying one milliliter to five gallons of hydrogen peroxide. 3% hydrogen peroxide and that was one milliliter to five gallons of it to help keep the bucket and everything not slimy and clean and free of any disease I had this on a 18 6 light schedule with the SE 3000 as you can see it did a marvelous job um, as I I'm gonna say again this was my very first time doing a deep water current so The bucket that I used was a root spa bucket and obviously I modified it a little bit to help with the training and having anchoring points to work my plant. I did low stress train this plant in the very beginning um, as you can even see here in this where I had laid it down on its side and I had pulled it over to have it so that it spread out more and grew into a bush style structure as you see and it does have some really thick, nice smelling colas on it. So we're gonna get to, I'm gonna get to harvesting her right now and uh, set you up here. Then once I'm gonna pull the roots out and let you take a, take a look at what kind of root base I had going on. Okay. Alright everybody, I want to thank everybody again for liking, watching, subscribing. Um, this will be on my YouTube. Uh, this will also be on uh, the Amsterdam Marijuana uh, YouTube channel for the Growers Corner at some point. And I guess let's open it up and see what, let me see what, show you what the roots are here. Okay, so I'll move in here. It's a little bit wet. Probably gonna lose little bits. Very, very fine at the bottom. As you can see where it broke down. Um, just an amazing root mass on it. And yeah, I'm making a big mess, but it's pretty much the only way I can show you this.
looks like she had a really, really good strong root system for, like I said, we were at the start of 12 weeks today. Get that spun around for you a little more. back in there to hold it up. I wanted to make sure you all could get to see the roots that I had left from her. And it's time to cut her down. There. She's pretty heavy too. That is one solid plant. Uh, I'm going to section her down here and hang her up to dry. Show you some of these buds as I get deeper and deeper into her. You can see she just has some really, really pretty buds on her. She's got really nice colors on her. leaf matter that's dried up already from her being on a flush. And then when I hang it up, I don't want to leave it bunched up. So when it's hanging, you don't want to leave a mass like that hanging. Um, you get in the dark, you leave it in the dark, you get that much uh, humidity. If you don't have really good air circulation, the next thing you got is mold and you have ruined your harvest you have gotten mold in it so it's always best to spread some of it out a little bit make it to where it's not quite as dense and compact not only save your harvest because there's nothing worse than going through however long it takes you to grow it and then to get mold in your final stretch really a bummer. But she does have some really nice dense uh, colas on her. Uh, they're really dense. And she's got a really strong smell to her. dead leaves. I just did uh, 24 hours of darkness on her prior to uh, today. The 24 hour darkness is one of those um, skeptical unproven scientific things yet. Some people prefer to do it, some people do not. Same thing as uh, with flushing. There's a lot of debate over the two. I'm not looking to pick no battles on that. I flush. Um, honestly, I think you should flush. I mean, unless you are using a pure organic system, then you'll probably be all right not flushing. 
or doing a very short amount of time if it's pure, pure organic. Um, I do not use pure organic, I use salts, so therefore flushing is highly ideal for me. Um, I have tried it with not flushing and it was pretty gross. It made the bud taste really bitter. Um, anybody wants to try it, the best thing I can tell you to do is grow your plant when you get to that point when you want to start flushing it. Cut yourself off a bud about yay big or piece about yay big or so because it's going to shrivel up when it dries. Um, and then wait the flushing time on the rest of it. When the rest of it's ready, you know, then obviously harvest the rest of it. And then when it's all dry, just do a taste, you know, taste the, taste the one and taste the stuff that was, uh, that you flushed. And yeah, if it was anything like what I did, I ended up having to, um, couldn't finish the part that I had tried to smoke because it was just too, it was too bitter and nasty tasting from the salts and chemicals and that were used to grow it. Um, so I just used it and washed it and turned it into bubble hash. So <clears throat> it never hurts to have a backup plant, but uh, I know that's not the, that's not available for everybody right, right up here. Some might not know how. <clears throat> like I said, I always want to keep it to where it's, don't want to get it too bunched up. She does have a lot of flour on her. But I, I think I did pretty good for my first uh, deep water current. Um, like I said, the method that I have been growing to prior using the hydro soil is very similar. Um, there was a couple of things I had to pick up along the way. Um, I want to thank everybody uh, that's watching that had helped me along my journey of growing this with the extra tips and little things that I didn't know. My yield probably would have been about half of this without it if, if I would have made it that far. So I'm very appreciative to uh, everyone in the community. Um, I'm, most of the people that I talked to uh, that were helpful were on Grow Diaries. Um, my Grow Diaries ID is uh, Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S. Like I said, getting my medical card to grow um, and my and paying for the cultivation license part of it was probably one of the better things I had done. So I know there's a lot of places where that is possible and I know there's a lot of places that it's not. It is still highly illegal. And those of you folks that are doing it under the radar, just be careful. I guess I could give you a couple little facts about a Pineapple Express Auto here. It is known to have anywhere between a 21 to a 23% THC. Um, it is a 25% indica, a 75% sativa. The effects have been recorded as being happy, relaxed, and uplifting. And the flavor is a berries, fruit, sour, and a tropical mix. So um, it does have a little bit of a tropical citrusy kind of smell as I've been working with it here now it is actually very strong so here's another one of the colas here if I can get it unburied a little bit just to give you a look at some of the colas some of the colors things that uh, what she uh, did like I said the buds they're real nice and dense Now 
what I usually do is I try to, to dry it slowly because uh, I don't have a, a good controlled drying area. So I leave a lot of the fan leaves on it. Um, I'll wait several days. Then I will come and go through and trim off these fan leaves. Um, and once they've served their purpose and slow the drying process down a little bit, it helps add about an extra day or two to the drying process which also helps um, from my experiences with uh, adding more flavor, better tasting um, bud, helps, helps, gives it more time for the chlorophyll to get out of the bud, out of the leaves, um, the leach to chlorophyll, which is another uh, reason. I like to do the 24 hour, or 48 hours of darkness prior is to start help leaching the chlorophyll out of the plant itself. Because that will make your your uh, weed harsh. And then here was what would have been the main cola as I've worked my way up to it. Let's take that off there anyway. So that would have been the main cola right here. So, but by, by low stress training it, I forced it to grow a whole lot of other, this coal probably would have been much bigger if it would have grown without any training, but all of these would have been a lot smaller. So by low stress training it and allowing the light to, as it grew, to make all of this part of the plant grow up and to be a bush, you've seen how the result was from it. Um, I start training when they're very young because I want to make sure I get that as soon as they come up, then I want to start laying them down. And then, as, and then as they go into flowering, I usually have it covering the whole potter and it begins to, and then I let it rise as it stretches and flowers. It helps keep a uh, lower, stealthier plant as well. I know that's important to a lot of people, especially in the areas like I was saying before where it has not yet uh, made it through your legislation and become legal. I know it is changing all over the world. Um, slowly but surely, some places faster, some places have it really, really good. Some places got it better than me. I want to thank everybody again for watching, uh, liking, following, sharing, subscribing, all them fun things. Uh, help support your local growers. Very important things. Especially as we move toward getting legislation further and further in the world, the more of it that's out there, um, the more accepted it becomes. That's the way I look at it. All right, and then there's my last hanger. So I have uh, one big old heavy hanger three four those are both pretty heavy and five she's not quite as heavy but a lot of bud there I think I did really really good for my first uh, deep water current I'm expecting after this dries to be somewhere between about maybe about five ounces maybe it's my guess I don't know for sure um, I will be back with you in about two weeks, two, three weeks or so with the final results. Um, thanks again, everybody, and I hope you have a good one out there and happy growing.